to see you all coming back to naftalitribe.com and each hour 24 into 7 broadcasting their programs from Kochi India for this week we are discussing a new topic titled in between two wars we are actually discussing where do we stand now in the human history where do we stand now in the history of mankind we stand in between two wars mankind has two recorded histories one history is recorded by man from the time he came to know how to write and record things it is a recording of the events that has happened and that is or that are happening some guesses may be made about the future but that is not recorded as the history these guesses may come true or may go false another history of mankind is recorded already it is recorded in the spiritual realm and this history is written and recorded by god the creator of the universe and man and the history uh, recorded by god contains the past the present and the future that history starts from the beginning of mankind to the eternity and the history written by or recorded by god is an unchanging history even the history written about the future of mankind is unchanging as i told you already we stand in between two wars we all know that war never ends with a war the first world war was fought to end all wars but tragically wars still continue there happened a second world war and the events in this world is pointing to a third world war we are, we are sadly expecting another world war so war never ends war the only way to end a war to annihilate the enemy or to destroy the enemy totally so that the enemy nation will never arise again it will never come back our ancients knew this truth about war so whenever they fought war and won over over their enemy they took certain steps to annihilate and destroy the enemy forever the one thing they did is to destroy the population in the defeated country totally they will kill all men and all male children and will take all women as captives to their country by that they are destroying the population in the country and without any population there is no nation and another thing they used to do is to destroy the agriculture and kill the cattle they will burn the fields and they will kill all cattle and also they will destroy all water resources by filling them with mud and stones so by this they are destroying the economy of the country and any chance of population or repopulation is totally destroyed and another third step they used to do is to kill all the warriors or take them as captives hereafter there should not be any warrior to fight for that country all the military power is destroyed and fourth step they they, they used to take is to kill the king and the ministers in the country by that they are destroying they are killing they are annihilating the governance the political power and the human resources in the country
there will be no more leadership in the country and the last thing they used to do is to kill the priest of the country ransack and destroy or even burn the, the temple in the country and take away all the wealth from the all the gold and silver from the country to the nation by this they prove that the god of the defeated nation was powerless before the god of the victorious nation all these steps may not be taken by the victorious nation uh, at a time but they used to to adopt uh, one or more than one of the steps to see that the defeated nation is destroyed thoroughly so that the nation will never come back again now let us keep this in our mind and let us think of thing what, what jesus did when he came to this earth jesus came to this earth with one aim and that was to restore or reestablish the kingdom of god when i say reestablish and restore i mean that the kingdom of god was here on this earth once and now it is with an enemy that is satan jesus came to restore the kingdom of god in matthew chapter 4 verse 12 we read that jesus went to galilee in order to start his ministry when he heard that john the baptist was in prison he went to galilee and there he started his ministry in verse 17 we read like this from that time jesus began to preach and to say repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand jesus started his ministry by declaring that the kingdom of god is at hand or the kingdom of heaven is at hand and to restore the kingdom of god was the uh, aim of jesus was the aim of his uh, mission on this earth and restoring the kingdom of god includes repentance the born again experience baptism in water baptism in holy spirit holy life and to live as a disciple of jesus so all these things includes in that one single mission uh, the restoration of the kingdom of god so what did jesus do in order to restore the kingdom of god so we we have already stated that the, the kingdom of god was on this earth once it was established on this earth once and now it is taken away by an enemy so if you want to restore the kingdom of god you have to defeat the enemy take away the kingdom of god the authorities and power from the enemy and they establish and declare the establishment of the kingdom of god on this earth and this is what exactly what jesus did in colossians chapter 2 verse 15 we read having disarmed the principalities and powers he made a public spectacle of them triumphing over them in it so the verse is very clear that jesus defeated principalities and powers that is the principalities and powers of satan and he made the defeated satan a public spectacle so that everybody can see that satan is defeated and jesus triumphed over it this is what happened when jesus died on the cross in the spiritual realm in the physical realm when we look at the cross we see jesus hanging on the cross and dying but in the spiritual realm it is satan is defeated he is disarmed the authorities are taken from satan arms are taken from satan and jesus was triumphing over satan but still even after this first war satan has the freedom to work on this earth because he was not totally annihilated his country his kingdom was not annihilated satan is still trying to steal away the blessings of um, human beings so that means that the war is not ended the war is going on we need one more war at least to defeat and annihilate the kingdom of satan totally from this world 
so our spiritual condition is this we are delivered from the kingdom of satan we are born again into a spiritual kingdom of god but we still live in this physical world where satan has the freedom to move and work satan and his kingdom are defeated and made powerless that is a truth but still they exist they are not totally wiped away from the face of the universe so the war is going on and we are also a part of the war when will the final destruction of satan happen after the second coming of christ christ will restore the kingdom of god in his fullness christ will reign over this whole world as the king uh, of the kingdom of god after that satan will be kept in prison for 1000 years and for this 1000 years or we call it millennium jesus will be ruling over this earth as the supreme god as the supreme king as the unquestionable king there will be no sin for that uh, period that millennium period after the millennium satan will be let loose and uh, once again he will get an opportunity to work among human beings and using this opportunity satan will turn many against uh, christ the king and here the final war take place jesus and his saints together they will destroy satan and his followers once again that is the final war by fire from heaven we are reading about it in revelation chapter 20 verse 10 the devil who deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and they will be tormented day and night for ever and ever in revelation chapter 20 verse 14 we read again the death and hades were cast into the lake of fire this is the second death so the devil and death and hades all these things will be cast into fire and this is the second death this is the final defeat of the kingdom of satan this is the annihilation of the kingdom of satan this is the final war so now in the human history written by god in the spiritual realm we are standing in between these two wars one war is over another war is yet to happen the first war was over and this is disarmed and defeated satan the last war has not yet happened satan death and hades will be thrown into the lake of fire after the last war and we are eagerly looking to the uh, last war when the final destruction of the kingdom of satan will happen now what are we doing now meanwhile we are on this earth and what are we doing now in one sentence let me tell you we are declaring the kingdom and establishing the kingdom of god we do four things while we live on this earth or while we are living on this earth at this junction of the history of human kind one we celebrate the victory of the kingdom of god during the ancient time if the enemy king and the military generals are not killed in the war they will be caught alive and they will be taken to the victorious nation or by the winner bound by chains and shame they will be exposed to the whole citizens of the nation so that the whole citizen will know that their enemy is defeated and is bound and is destined to death they will be put in prison for a while and meanwhile while they are in the prison while the defeated king and his uh, uh, men are in the prison a great celebration will happen in the uh, successful nation this is a triumphal celebration that may continue uh, more for more than one week 
the celebration may be conducted for one day two day or one week or even more than one week during this time the wealth that was taken away from the defeated nation there is a gold and silver will be distributed among the people of the successful nation and the whole nation the whole his citizen in the nation are celebrating this victory so we are here we are celebrating the victory of our lord jesus christ over satan and his men now during this victory time satan and his men are they are waiting for their final defeat paul is talking about this victory celebration in second corinthians chapter 2 verse 14 now thanks be to god who always leads us in triumph in christ and through us diffuses the fragrance of his knowledge in every place paul is talking about the triumph in christ and when paul speaks about the triumph in christ paul is talking about this triumphal celebration in the cities of uh, the successful nation during the ancient time and not only that uh, jesus is distributing the wealth taken away from the enemy nation in luke chapter 11 verse 21 and 22 we read when a strong man fully armed guards his own place his goods are in peace but when a stronger than he comes upon him and overcomes him he takes from him all his armor in which he trusted and devises his spoils so this is what is happening now the strong man the first strong man is satan and he was keeping all the blessings of human beings in his treasury and the second stronger man is jesus and the stronger man jesus came and defeated satan he took away all the blessings that were kept in the treasury of satan and now he is dividing all these blessings he is distributing all these blessings among his uh, people and the second thing we are doing now is we declare the power and the authority of the kingdom of god how we declare the power and authority of the kingdom of god in matthew chapter 11 verse 2 to 5 we read some about some disciples coming to jesus and with a message from john the baptist asking him whether he is the the expected king or not to that jesus is replying like this verse 5 the blind see and the lepers walk the lepers are cleansed and the deaf hear the dead are raised up and the poor have the gospel preached to them so whether the kingdom of god has already come on this earth or not we understand by these signs what are the signs of the kingdom of god re- restoration on this earth the blind see the lame walk the lepers are cleansed the deaf hear and the dead are raised up and the poor have the gospel preached to them and by doing all these things by healing the people by delivering people from the bondage of satan by preaching about the kingdom of god we declare and we show the world the power and authority of the kingdom of god in luke chapter 11 verse 20 to 22 we read but if i cast out demons with the finger of god surely the kingdom of god has come upon you there is verse 20 and i think that will be sufficient for us now if i cast out the demons with the finger of god this is his telling i am casting out demons with the finger of god with the power of god that means that the kingdom of god has come upon you and we are declaring to the world that the kingdom has already come upon this world by delivering people from the bondages of satan and the third thing we are doing is that we are giving freedom in jesus name to all slaves of satan we are declaring this freedom that is a legal declaration legal offer that we make we ask we tell everyone in this world that jesus will set you free 
Jesus has already defeated Satan and now you are free to come to Jesus and accept his freedom. About this Peter uh, wrote in 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 9 but you are a chosen generation a royal priesthood a holy nation his own special people that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light we are leading people out of darkness into the marvelous light or we should lead people out of darkness into god's marvelous life that is something that we must do while we are living uh, during this junction of the history the fourth thing we are supposed to do while we are on this earth at this very particular juncture in the history of human kind is to bring down the kingdom of heaven how shall we bring down the kingdom of heaven while our lord was living uh, on this earth among us as a man he taught us a prayer it is recorded in matthew chapter 6 verse ten says like this your kingdom come that we should pray for his kingdom to come that is kingdom of god to come your will be done on earth as it is in heaven your kingdom come and your will be done are one and the same thing when god's will is done as it is in heaven on this earth god's kingdom is or has come on this earth so we are praying so that god's kingdom will come on this earth in his fullness we are supposed to pray it we have a duty to pray it our lord has entrusted us to pray for god's kingdom to come on this earth so let me conclude by repeating uh, whatever we were thinking for a while we are standing in between two wars in the history written by god in the spiritual realm one war has already happened and another is yet to happen in the first war of our lord jesus defeated satan and disarmed him and in the last war the kingdom of satan will be totally annihilated and satan also will be totally annihilated there will be no more war that is a second death and and during this period in between these two wars we have certain duty to do we are celebrating this victory of course that is a good thing we are enjoying the blessing at the same time we have to show this world that kingdom of god is already restored on this world and it has power and authority over the kingdom of satan and we have to lead many people from darkness to light to the light of god to the light of the kingdom of god and we have to pray so that the kingdom of god so that the will of god will be done on earth when the will of god is done on earth as it is done in heaven the kingdom of god has come on this earth or will come on this earth with in its fullness may god bless you by this uh, uh, blessing thank you for listening come back uh, again next week for another message thank you once again